Ah. Hello, good morning, and welcome to this Dawn Buster's Taste Challenge. All right, I, I was going to start about 10 minutes ago, but I got delayed with, I, had, I noticed I had some mistakes on what I had typed with uh, the information on this one and a previous. I had kind of mixed them up, so I fixed that. We have this morning another American Blended Whiskey Taste Challenge. Bellows. This is a Luxco brand for the last mm, about eight years. This is bottled in St. Louis, Missouri by Luxco. It says Bellows, but it's really Luxco. They bought the brand. It was established in 1830 as an independent company, but you know how that goes. They get bought out. So, pfft. all right. Uh, I did the Bellows Club Whiskey series already. That one was sort of nasty as I kept drinking on it. At first, it tasted good. I said, well, it tastes pretty good. And then, mm -mm -mm, declined. This one did not decline. It's just kind of basic, but it just stayed basic. You know what I mean? When I put it in taste challenges, it didn't get, didn't uh, present ugliness. So that's Bellows. I bought this in Metairie, Louisiana at International Market. It was $8.99, $8.99 for the liter bottle. The competition this morning, and that's what's left, is Barton American Blended Whiskey. See if we can stop the glare. Daylight's coming in pretty strong. Barton American. I bought this at Smoker Friendly. Smoker Friendly on United States Highway 60, westbound side of the highway. In other words, the north side of the highway, westbound, at the junction of US 127 in Frankfort, Kentucky. And I just walked there from the hotel because. It was kind of an area where you could walk around and not have to drive here and there. And uh, it was a fascinating place, smoker friendly. And this was after tax. Now I'm saying to you, after I paid the tax, it was six dollars and thirty-five cents for the seven fifty. Not bad, right? Okay. Uh, there's a Barton. It's a line, just like Bellows. Barton is a line of liquor, exactly like Bellows. You can get Barton um straight bourbon whiskey you can get a barton 90 proof bourbon whiskey you can get a barton um extra aged you can get barton this blended which came out in 1949 incidentally you can get barton uh those ones i'm talking about are called vario barton vob uh you can get the barton 1792 which are the specialty you know better better quality bourbons you can get Barton Gin, Barton Rum, Barton Liqueurs. <laughs> okay, Barton Vodka. All right, so that's the whole. It used to be a company, you know. It, they had their own distilleries and bottling plants. And in 2009, 10 years ago, Sazerac bought Barton. And that is where the story is for that. Both of these are 80% grain neutral spirits. In other words, corn, whiskey, unaged, white lightning, <laughs> you know what I mean? Which is then diluted with water down to 80 proof. The lady was explaining how they did that at the distillery at Barton 1792 distillery. She said they just take the white light and the moonshine that, that like you can get Everclear, you can buy that. It's almost 100% pure alcohol. And she showed us the column still and all this. All right, so they drop it down. She said, all you do is just use water down to 80 proof, and then they'll start blend it, blending it and everything. So it's 20% straight bourbon whiskey. You would say bourbon because you know they're using very old Barton for your age. There's no age statement. You know they're not using 1792 single barrel <laughs> for this. Uh, we love to hear from our customers, so they let you know who owns it, because over here at Sazerac.com with their phone number, so in case you thought it wasn't Sazerac. All right. So eight. when did the Bellows American come out? I don't know. The company's been, like I said, since 1830. So here we go. Mm -hmm.
Let's see, they have these advertisements for Dark Phoenix coming out. <clears throat> this is the Sazerac. And this is the Bellows. Uh, I remember back in 1981, well, you know, it was 1975 when Jean Grey, Ms. Marvel Girl, got, you know, X-Men number 101, got transformed into Phoenix. So something happened. It was extraordinary because she went into the lake and it was this big commotion, Dave Cockrum art. And, uh, and she came out as the Phoenix, this great, powerful, same color scheme, but and it was amazing because she came out with a stylish outfit. Even these whatever entities that made her into Phoenix had the sense to give her a 1975 outfit with the green and gold Marvel Girl color scheme and a sash, <laughs> you know, like they would wear off their hip in 1975. It was fascinating, even a 1975 hairstyle. So not only were these entities interested in it, giving her incredible power, they also had good fashion sense. Now, then we know what happened. Uh, she started having hallucinations and um, it was very bizarre. And uh, as we found out, oh yeah, the appearance, they're both amber, typical American blended whiskey, might be colored with caramel color, I don't know. And as we found out, the reason that hallucinations were bizarre is because it was Mastermind doing it. The evil Mastermind, who had been around since what, X-Men number two? But you see, he, they, they, they realized his powers were very extensive because he could make you think things that weren't real. Hallucinations, delusions, I guess more like hallucinations than a delusion, which led to a delusion his hallucination led to a delusion. So then she transformed into Dark Phoenix. And then she died. X-Men 137. Except, of course, it's comic books, so they never die. It's like soap operas. They always come back. Or Star Trek movies. They always come back. So it kind of like destroys the whole idea of, I was so upset when Spock died. But, yep, but he's back because, you know, we're not going to kill off our marketable character. Superman died in 1993, but I was like, yeah, that's a farce. So you say, well, comic books are basically like a scam. Yes, they have always been a scam, just like pro wrestling, soap operas, and movies. <laughs> so you got to get past the scam part of it and just enjoy the artwork, which is hard to do these days since most of it isn't very good, but you can go back and look at the old artwork. All right. And some people are too bought into it. You know, they're like caught up in it. I felt what the character felt. I was like, give me a break. Come on, man. You need to be detached from it. Anyway, Jeremy Vincent says, good morning. Uh, morning, Ron. Morning to you, Jeremy. All right. I appreciate you watching. Sorry I started late, but I had the, the, the administrative issues. In other words, I put the wrong information. Uh, um, it smells like um, a lot of corn-based product. Ethanol, you know what I'm saying? Like, It's almost like, um, in some ways, in some ways, cornbread. Which, for whiskey, isn't bad. For beer, is bad. I remember from around 2014 to 2016, and Ryan Spears was talking about that on Alcohol Eggs. Y'all can join Alcohol Eggs, where we talk about these things. Um, people post photos of what they're drinking and all. Um, the Samuel Adams Boston Lager started tasting like cornbread, which I said, there's something wrong with this beer. 
and other people were saying, yeah, yeah, what's wrong with it? And then all of a sudden it inexplicably went away. And then it started tasting like Boston lager again. But there was some kind of process problem, I think. You say, well, they watched your videos, you complained, and then they fixed it. Right, that's right. <laughs> okay. This one does not have the cornbread really so much. This one has, uh-oh, you say, don't say it. I have to say it. There is that, but there's an undercurrent. Mm -mm. An undercurrent of melon. This is not a Heaven Hill. Neither one of these is from Heaven Hill. But there is that a little bit, that honeydew melon, which to me is a flaw. I don't think any blended American whiskey or a scotch or Canadian, which they've never had that. I've never had a scotch or Canadian. They have other odd flavors, but a scotch or Canadian that had a honeydew melon flavor. But to me, that's some kind of flaw. Mm, okay. Corn. So this one already smells better. It smells like a proper... I know, cheap. We know that. They're only aged four years or more. But at least four years. I'm talking about the straight whiskeys in there. Mm, mm, mm. You say, what's the straight whiskey in Bellows? Well, it's probably just Bellows straight bourbon whiskey. There, You can get... I can't, to my knowledge now. You can get a Bellows straight Kentucky bourbon whiskey. Yeah, it's basic. Yeah, it's aged four years, probably no, not one millisecond longer. And never before used charred oak. I'm sure, I'm sure it's white oak barrels. Okay. All right. This is a common product in the United States of America. Cheap, straight bourbon whiskey. All right. You say, but they make it even cheaper. Right. Because they take cheap straight bourbon whiskey, which means it's almost all corn, have some rye, some wheat, barley, whatever they mix to give it flavor uh, or, or differentiated flavor. Then they blend it with 80% unaged, clear, dilute, water diluted grain alcohol. You say, oh, wow, that sounds like my cup of tea. Yeah, I mean, people are not running to buy that. They don't have to run to buy because you can get it very easily when you go to the convenience store in Louisiana. I don't know about your state. You could stop at Shell to get gas, which the Shell uh, convenience stores are called Big River here. Or you could stop at Exxon, which used to be called On The Go, but I think they've all been renamed um, Circle K. They're buying all the, um, Circle K is buying all the convenience stores and putting it under their quality control standards, which to me are not good. But anyway, um, Yeah, yeah, you can get it. No one's doing this with it. You know that. No one's sitting here saying, oh, oh, all that they're taking. Whatever Amer American blended whiskey is in your town. Here, it's not Barton or Bellows. No, 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 no. If I go to Racetrack, Big River, meaning Shell, mm -hmm. Birdies, another, that's like a Valero. I think Valero bought Birdies. Or whatever, it doesn't matter. It's going to be Heaven Hill. You say, oh, with that melon. Yeah. Yeah, with that honeydew melon. And all they're going to do is pour it in Coke or Sprite or Fanta or whatever they like to mix it with orange juice. And this, and then they get an, uh, 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 an egg and sausage burrito and they drink it and they eat it. You say, but that's very low brow. I know that's what the product is designed to be. You say, I hope they're getting off of work. Uh, in many cases, it's six in the morning, they're getting off of work over night shift and they're coming home and they're gonna drink some of it. In some cases, uh, ha, ha, ha. But anyway, you know, we're not looking at this in some kind of erudite manner, like, oh, this is so fine. It's, it's just really intricate whiskey. We have enough brains. Now, do some people buy blended with some quality perception, conceptuality. 
yeah, you can go up the ladder a little bit and get your Seagram 7 Crown. That would be running around here about $13, $14 a bottle. It's not cheap here. And that's 25% straight whiskey instead of 20. And uh, it, the quality is there. It tastes much better than these two. Uh, but it's still going to be a mixed. It's going to be used 99% of the time to make a mixed a highball. You know, that's this is what they're doing. Now, then you can really start getting into rip. I call it rip off territory. Like where you're getting, you, you know, you're not getting the value. Why are you buying? I don't want to name the brands because then the company might say, you picking on my brand. I know you never even tried this great bird dog and all of this. You're right. I haven't. So I can't judge it. But in my mind, I'm thinking, why would you buy bird dog? I'm not naming the brands as far as uh, an evaluation. I've never had them. OK, I can't judge them. That would be prejudging prejudice. But I'm saying those are like 80, 20. And they'd be like 21, 22 dollars a bottle. I'm not kidding. Go look at the store. Jeremiah Weed, Bird Duck, all these other ones. Blended American Whiskey, TX. That's from Texas. That's a craft. Huh? That's what they say. A craft distillery. And the other ones. They got them at Walmart. Beautiful bottles. TX. Real fancy bottle. But what's in it? Blended American Whiskey. And I'm, 20, I'm paying $23. I'm thinking, I don't know about this. I don't know about this because I could buy Logic. Not Logic I could buy Evan Williams, Evan Williams, straight bourbon whiskey, same size bottle for nine, uh, $10.99. I could buy Ancient Age, um, $9.99. All right. I could go to CVS if they have it. Sometimes they don't always have it. Maybe they don't even carry it anymore. They just throw T boots for $8.99. But now Rebecca Creek and Bird Dog and all of them might say, hold on, mister, you you got a video channel and you think you know everything. You're wrong because we have a good blend. All right. They their their contention might be our blend is way better than those straight bourbons. Okay. So you haven't even tried it. So don't start denouncing it. TX might say the same thing. You haven't tried it. So okay. All right. Fair enough. But still, it just seems kind of strange that uh Something that would be 75% grain neutral spirit is going to be able to go and contend against straight bourbon. But I could be wrong. I would have to actually do the challenge to be sure. But it just just seems to me a little high, 20 to $22 for that. But once again, they got blended scotch whiskey. That's $268 a bottle. Yeah, I didn't say $2680. I said $268 a bottle. The Johnny Walker uh, uh, Blue Label, and that's blended, and a lot of it is grain alcohol, grain whiskey. You know what I'm saying? Uh, this basic stuff. But I think in Scotland it has to be aged at least three years, mm -hmm. not just unaged. And it's clear, and they pour it in there. All right, Bird Dog is actually pretty good for flavored whiskey. Peach is awesome. Yeah, they're big. Jeremy's talking. About, the big thing that they do is flavored. Okay, peach, blueberry, and so on. That's their thing. But they also make an unflavored blended whiskey. It's just bird dog and it's blended whiskey, no flavorings. Except, you know, blended American whiskey is allowed to have up to two, I think two and a half percent, but no more than that, of blending sherry. Like they can put a little wine in it to give it sherry wine to give it some flavor. So, but that's you don't even have to disclose that the law allows for that. Read the tax and trade bureau regulations, read the regs. All right. But, um, and oh yeah, another big popular one. What's the one I bought? Uh, you see it everywhere. That band, Florida, Georgia line, Georgia, Florida, whatever, which one comes first. Uh, they have that sponsor. They sponsored it. You know, they, they, they develop it, but it's made by, you know, a big company. And they have all the flavors. I see that all around. But there's a strict, there's one that's just regular whiskey, you know, blended whiskey without flavor. That's the one I tried. Oh, it was pretty good, actually. Huh? But I wouldn't pay $22 for it. I don't even think they sell the unflavored one here, or at least I haven't seen it. Yeah, those are hard to find because people want the flavor, you see. Oh, what's the name of that one? Oh, heck. I see that thing all around. All right. 
but but mostly the flavor, the peach, the 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 yeah. It's one of those band brands, you know, rock band, country music band brands. Mm. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm starting to get met melon in this and I didn't taste it. Ah, it's strange. I haven't been tasting melon with the bellows. I don't think melon has two L's bellows has two L's. That should be <laughs> now Barton. Maybe it's Barton, but I thought the Barton had more of a sour mash whiskey taste. I'm a little confused right now. All right. I know this much. I don't really like either one that much. Uh, either one of these, I'm not like super delighted about. If I never have had either one again in my life, I wouldn't be missing them. I know that. Mm -mm. Um, but I think the one that tastes better or less offensive. <laughs> is this one here in my left hand because it's less yucky <laughs> you know it doesn't have like this <sighs> approach it, it is more corny corn corn whiskey huh corn and tastes a little bit more like you would expect it should taste like a whiskey should taste and I think that might be the bellows now, I'll tell you the truth. Old Camp. Yeah, that's the one. Old Camp. It's got the dog on it, right? Doesn't have like a dog. A dog. It has a dog on it. Yeah, I had Old Camp. We were at the camp drinking Old Camp. I had a dog on it. Yeah, that's the one. They have peach everywhere. And there's some other flavors too. But that's the big peach flavor. And the pecan, peach, pecan, something. Yeah, pecan, pecans. Cons. Uh, but I only tried the flit the the, 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 the non-flavored fireball. Oh, I never had that. But I know a lady, that's her water. You know, you say I drink water when I'm thirsty, or she drinks fireball when she's thirsty. And I never even have tried it. And I know fireball is made with Canadian blended whiskey. True story. How do I know that? Uh read their website. <laughs> Which brand of Canadian whiskey? I don't know. It's probably the base brand for Sazerac Canadian blended whiskeys. Whatever they use, does it. Okay, so this is the winner. This is the winner. Although, like I said, I wouldn't get too excited about it. But uh, I think it's the Bellows. So I think Bellows beats Barton. All right. You can't even get Barton in Louisiana. Not that Barton. Oh, yeah, you can get Barton 1792 every day. Every day, all day. And you might see Barton, uh, you know, one of their oddball things. Like, what's the name of that stuff? Oh, I'm not getting into that. You will see some of these. I was at Albertsons and they had all that. All right. So, um, Mr. Boston, you'll see Mr. Boston which came from Barton, but I think they bought it from a company that was called Mr. Bar Boston. But that particular brand, you don't see around her. Please be a B. It is a B, Bellows. Ha, ha, ha. I put S for Barton because Sazerac, you know what I mean? I put the parent company. I didn't want to put B against B. It'd be kind of hard to tell them apart, right? Um, well, the Bellows won. How about that? Look at you guys over there in Lux Co. Would I like to try the Lux Co rum? Well, yeah, actually I would. And in fact, I have a bottle in the fridge, the fridge, in the cabinet. <laughs> and guess what I saw the other day? I saw Bocador rum. You say Bocador, what the deuce is that? That's what I said when I saw it. They had Bocador 151 and Bocador Silver, you know, the white rum. I said, that's a pitiful looking label to myself. I said, what a cheap looking label, pitiful. 
And that's the same people that make Vendome French brandy. And that label's kind of sorry looking, but the bottle design is cool, like it's shaped triangular. But I said, look at this here, Bocador. I said, I gotta look up this company. Well, of course, the company's website looks pitiful. I said, look at this 1999 website. Look like they never updated it. But at least it's current. I mean, at least it's functional. At least it tells you about their products. Unlike, uh, <clears throat> I could bring up Haps, but I won't. I could have mentioned Sazerac, but I'm not gonna, thankfully. Who don't have websites worthwhile, worth looking at. But luckily, I didn't even bring those companies up. But let's focus on this company. You say it's called like Jacques something, something Jacques and Company, also known as Pennsylvania Distilling Company thing. They're the ones that make a beverage I bet you all see every Christmas time or Advent time. It's called Pennsylvania Dutch. You know what I'm talking about? That eggnog concoction? Oh, Matherns gets it in the small and big bottles. I mean cases of it. Pennsylvania Dutch eggnog. They sell that stuff. I mean people buy it left and right, left and right. I never tried it in my life, but somebody told me they tried it and they loved it. I don't know where this company's whiskey is coming from because you can't track that down. You, you could win a master detective award if you track that down. All I know is their headquarters is in Philadelphia and there's a bottling plant. Can you imagine what that must look like, this bottling plant? You say, I'm going on a tour there. Uh, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure you're not. Um, talk about an inner city pro it's got to be in the inner city. You know, it must be in an area that's kind of sketchy. You know what I'm saying? Like maybe in 1928, it was nice. Oh, but I said, oh, I feel so tempted to go buy that Bocador rum. You say, where does it come from? I don't know. Somewhere in the Caribbean. How do they make it? I don't know all this. It's $8 and something for a liter. Can you imagine what it must be like? It's like Majestic Distilling. Go look that up on the internet, Majestic, in Baltimore County, right? It's not in the city limits of Baltimore, but it's like literally on the other side of the line. You can see the map. And there's a railroad track that runs right behind the distillery. And then there's a one way, a dead end road that goes into it. Like you got to go down this road and then up on another road and then it takes you in. You know what I'm saying? Like it's designed to where you wouldn't really notice it. There is, and they still have the old paint on the building from the 19, 1890s, mo monumental distilling, used to be called monumental distilling. We talking about an old brick building, so old. And now it says my majestic distilling. You are not going on a tour there. I was looking at uh, satellite maps and you know those drones that Google uses, they'll even have street level view. You know, you can see the building, but I'll say, oh, that's, a lock that's on a lockdown. Ain't no way you're going on a tour there. But boy, wouldn't you love to? Now, that's when you get to see the real production, not these showcase tours where you don't see the real thing. Like that terribly disappointing Genesee beer tour. I said, this is a joke. I told Maria, I said, this is no kind of tour. I want to see that big factory behind me, what that huge facility. I want to go in there and see what's going on. Not this little uh, boutique thing. Uh-uh, you're not going to see that. Uh... So that's the ones I like to see, the real tour. Now, at least at Barton 1792, you get to see the real tour. Yeah, it's kind of grimy. It's kind of old. You know what I'm saying? Like it's old equipment. It's very basic. But that's the real tour. You go to Jack Daniels, everything is like clean, clean. It's almost like unbelievably clean. Like you say to yourself, how could a working factory be this clean? And then you start to think, this is not the real distillery. You know what I mean? This is the for public consumption distillery. And you got the old folksy guy, hey guys, or 
Hello, y'all. Welcome to Tennessee. Well, I'm, oh, Jack kicked the thing and he broke his toe and do 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 do. And we all down here. And I'm like, give me a break. And I'm paying seventeen dollars for this. They gave you the fake tour. Jeremy says the game. Yeah, it's like I call it the showcase tour. You know what I mean? In good grief, if you go to Evan Williams, you don't even get the tour. You get the Evan Williams experience. You say, what is that? It's like a museum, you know, like they show you around like this is all about Evan Williams. Do you get to go to see the real distillery? Oh, no. No, you don't. If you go to Jim Beam, do you get to see the real distillery? Well, you get to see the Jim Beam experience. You can handle the corn. You can smell the barley, but it ain't the real thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to pay money to go see that Disneyland presentation. I want to see the real place. All right. I'm going to stop ranting and raving. Bellows wins. When I went to that potato chip factory tour in Pennsylvania, that was a real tour. I got to see them really cooking the potato chips. I mean, dang, the place ain't even that big. That was Utz. No, not Utz. Hers, H-E-R-R apostrophe S. You see their chips around. And then I got to eat freshly cooked potato chips. They were hot. You couldn't touch them. They were so hot on that plate. That paper plate was full of grease after Soaked up the grease, but you'll never eat a potato chip better than that. Hot. Can it's it, it burns your fingers to the touch. And what you get out the bag is fine. It's fine, but it's it can't uh uh it's it's a whole different experience. The hot ones out the out the kettle or, or at the fryer or whatever it's not kettle cooked. But boy, 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 boy. All right. Now um when I went to Dixie Brewing, that was a real tour because I got to see the actual they didn't have a showcase tour. You know what I'm saying? Now, Falstaff Brewing in New Orleans went out of business 1978. Well, 79, some people say 78. I think it was 79, whatever. So that factory sat there empty. Then Katrina hit, so, you know, it was worse. And then uh, now it's been turned into apartments. Still got the Falstaff sign. Still got the big fat Gambrinus up there drinking the beer on the, bow, on the ledge. It looks like a brewery, but it's apartment complexes. They tried to knock it down. They were trying to knock down a wall to attach one side or to another or something. False staff apartments. And uh, <laughs> this thing was built in like the 1890s or whatever. The wrecking ball was bouncing off of it. That's how thick the brickwork is on these old distilleries and, and breweries. They were hitting it with, this was in the newspaper, they were hitting it with the wrecking ball and the wrecking ball was bouncing off of it. It wasn't doing any damage, it was just bouncing. I mean, it was chipping the bricks up. The guy said, how can I knock this wall down? So they just gave up on that idea. That's how well constructed it was. The wrecking ball was getting wrecked. <laughs> oh, well, in two days, two days, I'm planning to do bellows against, um, I can't remember, what is it? Bellows against... Um, Oh, yeah, Ancient Age. Well, I think Ancient Age is going to do better than the um, Barton. Ancient Age costs more anyway. This Ancient Age preferred, it's been on the market since 1936. Now, the company says 46, but I, I wrote an email to Sazerac and I told him, I said, your dates are wrong. And the lady said, well, how do you come about this knowledge? And I present, I sent her everything. I sent her all the documents, even photos, but I got no response because, you know, that's how these companies are. They They don't at least Anheuser-Busch changed their website. When I wrote them an email, I said, your website is wrong. They were saying that Bud Ice came out in 1984. I said, no, it was 94, 94, not 84. And I gave them all the information and they said, oh, thanks. And they changed it like about two days later. So see, some companies will do it. Others like this company won't. Oh, they probably wrote it on a notepad, change website, but you know, they probably never got around to it. <laughs> Ancient age preferred. I think this one could give Bellows a real run for the money because this one here, 
is a little it's a little more price it's 899 not 635 after tax but it's saying um it's from buffalo trace that's where it's from if you you know you get some really good whiskey at buffalo trace and then you can get this but if they're using ancient age straight bourbon then they're using sour mash bourbon so it gives it a little more flavor a little more quality <laughs> you know not a lot more still it still was only 8.99 for the bottle all right well i gotta get off of this i'm going walking voltron defender of the universe said you early brother no actually i'm late i wanted to start at 5 35 a.m but um i didn't make it the sunlight is there i mean i'm looking at the sunshine right on those bushes those are fruit trees actually not bushes those are tangerine this whole street is full of fruit i mean I wouldn't have to buy fruit. I could just pick it off these trees every year. It's incredible. No one could ever eat it all around here. We, we could have our own fruit stand, you know? All right, but anyway, uh, so Bellows wins, not by any great margin, you know what I'm saying? It's kind of, <laughs> but we'll do the ancient age and then we'll do the, uh, Seagram Seven Crown. You could skip that one Saturday morning. I'm planning to do it. If you want to save time and effort, don't even watch it because it's going to be such a blowout. That's a good way to promote my channel. I tell people don't watch. But I'm serious because Seagram Seven Crown will destroy it. Now, if, I mean, if you want to see a beatdown, if you want to see Bellows get destroyed, watch it. Believe me, there's no blended whiskey could even hold a candle to Seven Crown. I don't work for the audio, but I'm just telling you what's going to happen. Then we're getting it. Oh, then we're getting into Scotch whiskey. Oh yeah. You say what Scotch, which one? I love Johnny Walker. <clears throat> yeah. Well, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about, uh, <laughs> Inverhouse green plaid. You say, wow, green plaid. That's a prominent brand. <laughs> You're right. You remember all those Inverhouse green plaid commercials that, you never saw on TV since they don't exist. Yeah, that one. All right. Oh, my gosh. Thanks for watching this video production. Uh, and uh, in a couple of days, I'm going to do another beer uh, taste challenge. And I think it's good. I know it's going to be um, Paps Extra versus Magnum. It's, it's going to be just like the, the Steel Reserve 6%. It's not going to be really that much of a challenge. The PAPS actually doesn't really taste like it. It's different. Thanks.